morning everybody evening afternoon whatever it is when you watch this video well i don't know if you guys watched that putin tucker carlson interview or not i did and i've been waiting on this i've been watching all these podcasters but i haven't heard this yet it kind of makes me nervous we're wondering how come i'm if I'm the only one that's picked this up, or if I'm the only one that watched the interview, which is clearly not the truth, because that thing had over a million something views when I watched it. But if you did watch it, you might have heard a different narrative from Putin's mouth than what we've heard here in the States. You might have also heard something that's very key, I think, that he, Putin, actually wanted Hillary Clinton to beat Trump because Trump's an outsider, he's a wild card, they wouldn't know what he would do or blah, blah, blah. Basically wouldn't know how to control him through political, you know how politicians do political things. <laughs> but, but, uh, so nobody, what nobody's talking about is ever since that Putin Carlson interview, they have amped up the message about why we need to be mad at Russia, why we need to fight Russia, why we have to hate Russia. Of course, hearing something outside of our narrative made me think of that book again, Things That Can and Cannot Be Said. Uh, Snowden is part of it. Um, now I can't think of the actor's name. He's part of it. He played in, uh, I think, the movie 1402. Hard flip. Cusack. John Cusack, that's his name. He's part of it. So anyways, this lady uh, in the book, and I've said this in one of my other videos. Um, <laughs> I guess to catch you up, if you just came across this video and you've never watched any of my other videos, We're consistently living in a lie. And that lie is whatever information they put out to us. Okay, they always give us a what. I always have a hard time explaining this. They'll give us a, like a what happened or why something happened. Like if they give you the what, but they won't give you the why, or they give you the why, but they won't give you the what. Like, what's actually going on? I'm trying to think of a good example. Well, let's just go with the narrative we have. We should be f back in Ukraine, blah, 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 blah. Then you hear Putin's version of what's going on. I'm not calling Putin a good dude. He's obviously kill me, you, and anybody else before we could blink. And I think twice about it if we didn't fall in line. But to think of someone like Putin wanting Clinton over Trump, Hillary Clinton, should tell everybody everything they need to know about why we need Donald Trump and maybe where Russia's at about wanting America to be lined up with its values and what Russia's doing. Because I've said before, and I'm going to be all over the place on this video, that everything that happened to COVID, all that was already planned and put in place. Nobody thought Trump would win, including Trump. So Hillary was gonna come in and everything that's happened was gonna happen anyways, is probably a lot worse. <laughs> right, Cause now it used to be censored or whatever. If you try to say the virus came from Wuhan that you know, you're a conspiracy theorist or whatever. They've pretty much narrowed that down, haven't they? But back to why nobody is talking about the narrative from Putin compared to the narrative we hear here in the States. Oh, yeah, so back to that book. So she come over here to the States. This was after 9-11. And she would hear people spewing, right, the propaganda that we've been given. And to her, just made her brain hurt. 
because the majority of us, we don't know anything about any other countries except what's told to us because we've never been there, probably never will go there. Some of us have been to other places, combat zones, so we've got to see the most beautiful areas of said cities and countries. So, we only know whatever BS they feed us. All right, now Russia could be one of the greatest places in the world. I'm not saying it is, but they wouldn't tell us that because they want to keep us here in America because America is, in my opinion, was the greatest place on earth. So the whole time Trump was in office, they did couldn't even make it down the escalators. They were trying to get rid of that man. All right. COVID happened, lockdowns. They gave Trump an opportunity to be a dictator. I'm sure he saw that trap. He left it up to the states and what they wanted to do for the lockdowns. Very smart move on his part. Oh yeah, so <laughs> you guys are gonna love this. So back to that book. So she thought, so she was talking about how whatever we would say, whatever propaganda we're being fed about 9-11 and make her brain hurt. Well, imagine, if you will, back in the 80s, uh, Ronald Reagan, the Reagan regime, helped rebuild the Mujahideen, right? The Reagan era helped rebuild the Mujahideen. Help arm the Afghan and stuff to actually defeat Russia and kick them out. See, during that time, the women were, uh, they were in the classrooms, they were in the science labs, they were working. But after the Mujahideen, which later becomes ISIS and all these other terrorist organizations that we helped build the Reagan era, all right, so just kind of fast forward. They take the women out of the schools, put them back in the kitchen, put them back in the barkas and all that, put them back in their dresses. So they had freedoms. And then once the Russians got out of there, they said, you know, back in the kitchens and everything else. So the reason that's important, and I've said this before, so if you're just coming across this video, it's new to you. And if you've heard this before, sorry. But my first one to write me to God, we're talking. He was like, hey, man, why do you think we're over here? And I was like, 9-11. Well, he thought we were there for oil. We agreed to disagree. Well, let's just call it six months later. We're in the chow hall watching Fox News or Fox News is up on the TV. And there's some Iraqi women sitting down, lined up against the wall or whatever. And it's being put on Fox News. For the first time, Iraqi women are being allowed to vote. I looked over at my homeboy that we had that discussion with. I said, you see that right there? That's why we're here. We kind of agreed on that. When you get in this book, they were already allowed to vote. <laughs> before the Mujahideen took back over. All right, so, and this is a question I, I even asked before I started going down rabbit holes after 9-11 happened. I mean, after the smoke kind of settled, no pun intended, you get to sit back and think a little bit and, you know, you join the military to go fight because we got, we were told we got attacked, right? So uh, you get to thinking, you got to think even back then, all right, all the technology we had. And let's pretend you're the president of the United States. Now, I know he didn't get word, I guess, until the planes already hit the towers. But that, a call came in somewhere, had to have been, that there was a hijacking. One plane had passengers try to take it back over, which is kind of odd out of all those planes only. One plane had people with balls in it try to take the plane back over. I don't see a president, our military, or anybody in power allowing a hijacked plane to run into anything. Because, I mean, you got a choice. You can, unfortunately, Knock 300 people out of the sky, give or take, right? Or 3,000 plus on the ground. But back to it. So we had this, all this propaganda being fed that we were attacked. Um, 
We let it happen. It, it was set up. We needed an enemy is all I'm trying to get at. Uh, not as weak as I thought it was. So, in order to have an enemy, they needed to fabricate a terrorist attack. Get everybody hyped up. Oh, yeah, we hate Iraq. We have to go over there in Afghanistan and fight the terrorism. Because this is what they did to us. Well, we built that terrorist club. We rebuilt it. Muhajim. It's in that book. doesn't mean it's true. I get that, but there's a very good possibility it is because in that same book, the same lady talks about, I guess she was in a village and she was whatever, doing whatever she was doing in that village. And you got big corporations wanting to come in there and get on their land because they got some valuable minerals or whatever. And uh, the people won't budge. They won't get off the land. Um, but the, the corporations can't get in there they keep getting killed <laughs> or whatever and the police chief said you know if you want to get that village you want to get those people out of the village you want to be able to take that take that land or whatever so all you have to do is put a TV in every hut think about that for a second all you have to do if you want to get that land is put a TV in every hut We all know about MK3 Ultra, at least you've been watching my channels, you should by now. <laughs> it's all a big propaganda machine. So Putin gets this interview, spits things a little bit different than what we're used to hearing. Carlson's under fire. Both, all, all networks, as far as I can tell. No, I can't even say that, but <laughs> the conversation has definitely went back up about how bad Russia is and why we need to back Ukraine and all this other stuff. But I haven't heard anybody talking about that. I mean, that says, that should just say a mouthful of mouths of everything, that Putin wanted to see Hillary Clinton in office instead of Trump. Wow. Go get those votes out. So, on to the next big topic. <coughs> Sorry. This is for everybody who's still asleep. The latest trucker convoy or protest not taking loads into New York or out of New York. However the hell that's working. Okay, you know, help me read some of the comments on some of these I read comments all the time on whatever I'm watching just to see where everybody's heads are at. So someone said, you know what? Doing that stupid because immigrants are just going to take your trucking jobs. You've got a bunch of Americans that are not going to talk about immigrants right now that got paid some money during the lockdowns who refused to go to work today because they can get paid sitting on their asses at home. So, the way I see it, there are definitely two diff two types of immigrants. Good and bad, right? Too easy. Now, they're saying they needed to be vetted before they come across the border. And I 100% agree with that, but there's tall tale signs you can tell who's who. So, let's say you're an illegal immigrant coming in here Illegally, say some bull jump so you can just walk across the border and live off the taxpayers' dollars until you know you get up on your feet. So I'm sure some of you can already see where this is going. Two types of immigrants legal ones or illegal ones. No, no. Okay, good ones and the bad ones, right? And I ain't talking about the ones who do it legal or the ones who do it illegal because where they're going is going to tell you what kind of immigrant they are. Now, granted, they've been on a however mile journey trying to get here right risking their own life and limb to come here illegal illegally and i should feel sorry for them because of that no i'm not gonna feel sorry for the kids whose parents were dumb enough to bring the kids on this journey they don't even know if they're going to make it or not of course it's a lot easier now than it was i don't know say about four years ago <laughs> but anyways so if you got a bunch of migrants going to new york 
probably not going to New York to work, are they? Of course not. New York's a sanctuary city, and they know they can live off the government's taint. Probably in a nice hotel. Get everything given to you, literally. And if you don't like it, you can complain about free stuff. That's the gratitude they show. So, while you're threatening, Ill illegal immigrants are going to get in that line to go drive a truck to earn pennies on the dollar to drive in downtown New York, which they will, from what I've here, learn real quickly, it ain't worth it. Tolls traffic alone ain't, can't fit nowhere. <laughs> so anyways, what some of you liberals or fucktards out there are trying to tell me is it's stupid for the truckers to protest because people getting free shit and living in free hotel rooms and everything else is going to go get in that line so they can go to work and call us dumbasses. That's like me turning your head around to make you look at yourself. <laughs> Exorcist. Now, you got some migrants going to say, I don't know, Oklahoma? I don't know how much crime is in Oklahoma, but I'm just saying. Let's say you got migrants going to a red state instead of a sanctuary blue state. They might be coming here for the right reasons. They definitely don't want to be around the crime. They don't want to be a part of it. Probably want a job. So, New York, while well, you're going to wait on all these immigrants to save you, you might want to get off your own asses and go get in that truck line and get your CDL. Because just like Americans born and bred, they ain't going to give up that government teeth without a fight. Come on now. So truckers, they also try to put you down saying, well, this is going to raise cost here because you're doing this and make you guys look like the bad guys. Well, fuck them. All right. Because you guys are heroes. They want me to be mad at you because of a choice you make can make prices go up. When we have a president sitting in office that by seems like a phone call, right? Definitely. But just by saying, hey, go drill can make our prices go down at the gas pump. You know how they up prices, right? When it comes like 4th of July or put sales on to make sure you can try to afford food. And then, you know, like when you're traveling, you know, it's going to be Christmas or whatever. Gas prices go up. Food might go up. They control prices. <laughs> oh, I was almost getting so happy you know what I was about to say. So, truckers do what you're doing. And they can control the prices. They can raise them or they can lower them. Now, I know at some point, it does matter on how much things are costing to get from here to there, blah, blah, blah. But wherever we fall short, that's already the administration's fault anyways because all the decisions they've been making since they've been in office. So, no, don't hate the truckers for being the only people in America having enough balls to stand up against this administration and try to teach them a lesson. Because your president, any president, but especially this POTUS, He's going to do whatever he wants, when he wants. And if it's raising prices to punish us because we don't like the way he does things, well, that's what he's going to do. In fact, if they don't like the way you're talking, if you're a businessman, you might just have to go get fined because they don't like your behavior, which that's just, you know, saying anything against the left is bad. So no one's picking up on why all the amped up nonsense about why we have to hate Russia again after the Tucker Carlson interview. It's because we're hearing a different, different propaganda than what we're hearing over here. Again, I'm not saying Putin's a good dude. He'd kill me and you before we even blinked before he blinked. Three times. <laughs> three people could have blinked and done killed us three times. How's that happen? Well, it just did. Three times. Dead. Died three times. So they're reminding us why we have to hate Russia. I mean, it's, it's been full on. I've been paying attention. <laughs> and truckers, keep doing what you're doing. Um, people saying you're trying to reverse this against the truckers. The truckers right now are the only Americans doing anything. And I wish every trucker could get on board. But... Sometimes people just got to pay bills and ain't going to hate you for having bills to pay. 
But as far as migrants, I mean, yeah, there might be some truck driver migrants ready to drive to New York and back a couple of times so they figure out how, how rough it is or how hard it is to get in and out and all the tolls they got to pay. So you got people say migrants are going to come to the rescue when you've only got two different kinds. The ones that came here to actually want to work, make a better life for themselves and their kids, and those that have come over here to make money any way they can, especially illegally, to make their life better no matter how hard it is on your lives. Now, while you're sitting there getting mad at truckers making because they're going to make the cost go up and everything else, you got, what, what's, what's the count now, like 7, mil, 7 million illegal immigrants eating up food? Buying up clothes, shoes, causing, helping cause shortages, supply and demand. If Americans ain't out there and wanting to work, get these supplies out here, demand's going up. Prices are going to go up anyways. So this price increase, if i got to pay a price increase because of who's in office, all right, we're already paying double what we used to pay for sodas. We're paying double on just about everything. Obviously, almost gas. So just about everything has gone up double. Used houses, old houses are being sold at new house prices that so you can have new house payments. <laughs> and you think I'm going to be mad about some fucking truckers protesting? I hope you protest until a Republican gets in office. Don't take nothing in New York. Don't take nothing to any sanctuary city, period. To any sanctuary state. They've got all the immigrants. Let them figure it out. Put them to work. Because like you said, they're going to take our jobs anyways. <laughs> yeah, they're taking something. They're taking all the benefits up. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. They ain't taking no jobs away. Because the jobs that are out there, if the Americans ain't working, it's because the Americans don't want to work them. Or they're too lazy to get out there and work them. And again, if the immigrants ain't coming here for the better life the right way, they out here doing criminal shit. Either way, theft. All the thefts out in California, all these, uh, what do you call them, organized crime things, looting stores. How much do you think the cost is of that of those items are going to go up? Because they got to replace that loss. That's a bit cost of business. You know, you, you think if you steal a piece of gum today, it's no big deal. Well, the problem is there's a million other people that thought it was no big deal to steal that one piece of gum. Now the gum companies got to make up for those one million pieces of gum that got stolen. So now my 25 cent piece of gum, pack of gum, just went up to 50 cents because they got to make up that million dollars. Plus, basic. So, no truckers, I ain't mad at you if the prices go up because the government and the ignorant people running into this country illegally and the ones running around in it born here, stealing, rioting, Doing a bunch of things that cost money to replace, cost more money to, you know, just in general, to get things working, product back out on the shelves, whatever, is going up the price anyways. So I'd rather be paying higher prices because of Americans doing American shit, as opposed to sitting on my ass while we have a corrupt government in power, doing whatever they want. And showing us using the strongest, one of the most powerful men, is what they say in America. What's going to happen if you don't toe the line and do what they want you to do? That's all I'm seeing. So, and while all this is going on, I heard this from another podcaster this morning. There's only three major credit card companies now. So, oh, okay. Well, I don't have credit cards. I used to. I learned from that mistake. Won't do that no more. All that got paid off. Thank goodness. But uh, if you got credit cards, hey, I get it. I'm not going to down you for it. They're, they're good for emergencies or be good for daily life, just like the other podcaster said, because we all know how much eggs and milk cost, right? I was in a gas station the other day, even in Walmart. Now, Walmart's brand of milk was cheaper. And I really don't like buying Walmart anything brand because, I don't know, they seem like they're in cohorts with China. <laughs> Always having to recall meat and stuff. But uh, then like a, another name brand of milk was five something. But their, where's, theirs was two something. So naturally I went to the 
cheaper milk, which they knew I was going to do. You know, they know that. So they can put all this bad stuff in the, in the milk. You know, maybe you guys heard about Quaker Oats and Cheerios and all that. Like, people are just now catching on. And I just caught on not too long ago. I can't act like I've known everything forever. But, you know, they've been putting, they put stuff in our foods to make our kids diabetic, to make us diabetic. <laughs> I mean, you look at pictures back in the 70s and stuff. Everybody was more skinny minis running around than overweight people. I'll just put it that way. Now, what's changed? Well, technology's changed. People have gotten lazier, right? Computers do more work. Um, everybody's behind, behind their phone screens, computer screens, whatever, instead of being outside playing, getting the exercise, whatever. So, I mean, it could be other things, not just what they're putting in the food, but you cannot 86 the fact that they put stuff in food. Like, I didn't even know what GMO was up until a few months ago. I thought it was just something else. Some of y'all left-wing people were coming up with craziness just to complain about something because you, you know got nothing else better to do like go work make sure your bills are paid you got to bitch about you know something else color people's skin or you know their religious beliefs but uh so yeah gmo literally stands for genetically modified <laughs> wow genetically modified because i mean scientists will tell you god doesn't exist but they do everything they can to play God or try to make something better than what God made it. Nobody finds that <coughs> iron ironic either. So we've got people wanting you to get mad at truckers for being American, standing up to the system, which we should all be doing. And you know, in all honesty, the only way I could think of, and it wouldn't work, <coughs> is exactly that. We just wouldn't go to work. No, I think it would be fair if you think about it coming, you know, when we got locked down, who was essential and who wasn't. And we got told that, you know. These are people you voted. And people in power now are the people you were listening to about who was essential and who wasn't. Now, I get it. You're getting that, what was it, $4,000 a month or something like that? Probably more than you were making at work. So I ain't going to work. I'm going to keep the stimulus money coming. <laughs> Vote blue. Yeah, we all know how those immigrants are going to be voting, don't we? But we're a bit, we all wish we were getting some of that money. Which you know, brings me to another point I think I brought up. Every administration after this one should have some answering to do. Because again, let's go back to what's the number now? Seven million illegal immigrants inside this country living for free off the government's tit. Yet we have had homeless people in our country this whole time. Now some choose to be out there. So you know what? We ain't gonna count those people. All right? Well, let them have it. You ain't getting a dollar from me though because you're choosing to live that way. I ain't gonna help you out. So take the ones that ain't choosing to live that way, but now we've got seven million housed Fed, medical, clothed, walking around with a little debit credit card, paid for, prepaid. But we've had homeless people. Now, this is the government that we're all going to vote for. But see, the problem is that some of you actually think one side is going to take care of you. And you've been voting blue your whole life. Now, I'm only 45 years old, but in my 45 years of time, I have not once seen the ghettos change. They might have change the way they make the build the buildings or the houses right more energy efficient more cost efficient but your neighborhoods the people in them the shit that goes on in them the living conditions etc cetera, etc cetera. has any of that changed other than you know you got a new whatever environmental friendly house <laughs> but anyways You've been voting for them and voting for them. Kept your ass in the ghettos. <laughs> and now they got these illegal migrants <laughs> walking around with more money than you got. <laughs> <coughs> but <coughs> for whatever reason, because you're still asleep, and I'm just going to have to, or say you're just that ignorant, and I'm sorry by now, you're, you're either just that stupid or you're just that faithful to your party, you're still going to vote for that same party that wants to keep you under their control. 
When another party's just like, hey man, once you just get out there to work, pay your fucking taxes and follow the law, you're gonna be all right. But I don't seem too damn hard, is it? It's easier than trying to be a Christian, I know that. Oh yeah, for sure. Straight and narrow. Tell me about it. All right. I think I've ranted and raved about everything I wanted to this morning. But I just don't see why nobody's talking about the amp. Of you, we got to fight Putin since, since the Tucker Carlson interview. Now, I didn't get to listen to all of it. I had it on. I was driving, so couldn't pay attention to all of it. But I heard key things in there like <laughs> they didn't want Trump in there because they didn't know what he, what he would do. But they know what a politician would do, especially Hillary Clinton. So a communist wanted, if you didn't know the state we're in, if you still haven't woke up in the direction it's been going, Hillary to be in office. No, this is the same party that said Trump is going to send us into World War III and he got us out of never-ending wars. And since Biden's been in office, what? Hasn't this just been a rock and rolling coaster? Right? Truckers, I'm a veteran. I'm not going to salute you inside. You know, I got my beanie on inside, but I definitely salute you guys. I wish all of, oh yeah, back to the plan. Yeah, we don't go to work, right? But see, the mortgage people, companies, are going to have to be okay with, yeah, we ain't going to work either, so don't worry about paying your bills. In fact, nobody pay any more bills. Of course, they just turn off the electric on us and everything anyways, but as long as the people in the power plant didn't allow that to happen anyway, so the idea just never would work because one, greed runs is way too deep in all of us. It's some some degree. I mean, they make it to where we have to have money. We need money. So it doesn't matter how you feel about money. We need it. <laughs> Funny how the system works, isn't it? So yeah, that, that wouldn't work. And I can't say just go vote them out because uh, we've been paying attention. Either they know I know January, I'm, I'm still trying to give Americans the benefit of the doubt and say Trump won in 2020, all right? Because there's a reason the government didn't want to go back and double check, triple check, recount those votes. There's a reason for it. They wanted Trump out of the way. This is where it got us, where we're at today. Anything bad in your life, that isn't coming from another individual. All right, anything that's going on that's making your life bad that the government has control of, you voted for that. If the elections weren't rigged, you voted for the high inflation, you voted for the high crime, you voted for the no police, you voted for the Illegal immigration, obviously, open borders, which makes absolutely no sense. We're like the only country in the world with an open border. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, yeah. You want to eat crickets? You want to drive electric cars? Because you're not religious, right? Because if you think we're going to destroy the world, you're obviously not religious, because we're not going to destroy this world. I don't think in any religion does it say we're going to destroy this world. I think my mom's finally calmed down. You know, I forgot where I was going with everything. It doesn't matter. So, if you haven't watched that Tucker Putin interview, I only re recommend you do. It's kind of long. I think it's like two hours. Get a little history lesson in there and just, it's kind of refreshing, in all honesty. Hearing something that's not in the narrative. That's why I don't mind or sometimes want to talk to someone on the other side of the fence, if you will, about why it is they think or, you know, the ideas are good and as compared to how things were and blah, 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 because... I mean, if you can change my mind, by all means, I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> but again, 
Believe me, I'm kind of old. <laughs> kind of stuck in my ways. Yeah, I think I covered everything. I'd be ashamed if I didn't. All right, then.